Minions are by far one of the most important aspects of Hypixel Skyblock, as they enable you to generate millions of coins entirely passively, or even level up skills with no work whatsoever. That being said, while minions are incredibly useful, they can also be very complicated and tricky to learn, making it an especially daunting concept for early or even mid-game players. As a result, I've taken the time to put together this video, your one-stop shop to what minions are, how you obtain them, what the best minions in the game are, and how to maximize your minion setups. The goal of this progression guide is to walk you through everything you will ever need to know about setting up minions to accompany you along your skyblock journey. So with all that being said, let's jump straight into the first section of this video. Before we get into the juicy details of this video, we need to first start with the very basics. What actually are minions in Hypixel Skyblock? To put it simply, minions are just an NPC entity that you can place down on your island, and if they meet all of the necessary requirements, they will start to generate a specific resource. Most minions just require a 5x5 grid of empty air to surround the block they stand on. However, some minions, like the fishing minion, require water to surround them so that they can actually catch fish. Minions start at tier 1 and can be upgraded all the way up to either tier 11 or tier 12, but whether a minion has a tier 12 variant is dependent on which minion you're trying to upgrade. At the time of this recording, not every minion has had a tier 12 variant released yet, but if you're watching this video months down the line, there's a good chance that every minion can be upgraded to tier 12 by now. Regardless, sometimes it's not recommended to upgrade some minions to their maximum levels either way, and this is something that I will cover later on in this video. Upgrading minions are useful for two big reasons. The first is that each tier will increase both the interaction speed of the minion and its capacity to hold items, but the second reason is that this will unlock more minion slots. Minion slots are simply how many available spots you have on your skyblock island that will actually let you place minions on, and this will limit the number of minions you're physically allowed to have on your island at any given time. This has been put in place so that you basically can't just load your entire island with thousands of minions because if you could do this, it would be slightly broken. By default, you start with 5 minion slots on a fresh profile, but you can upgrade this all the way up to 31 total minion slots at the time that this video is being recorded. Surprisingly, minion slots are one of the most misunderstood and the most neglected features regarding minions in this game, so I will be sure to cover the most efficient ways to upgrade them later on in this video. Needless to say, now that we know the fundamental details about minions, let's talk about why you should care about them so much and how it benefits you greatly as a Skyblock player. Minions are extremely useful for a variety of reasons, but by far the most sought after one for the majority of Skyblock players is the ability to earn millions of coins at no extra cost. Because minions can work passively on your island 24-7, they can generate millions upon millions of coins entirely free as long as you set them up correctly. However, this isn't the only reason you should be using minions, because they can also be used to level up any skill that you might want to boost your XP levels in, or you can use them to level up any collection as well. In fact, some collections in this game require you to use a minion to even unlock them in the first place, meaning that you definitely have to set them up if you're trying to unlock everything in this game. Minion items are also extremely important to know about when setting up your minions. When you open a minion GUI, you're greeted with this lovely menu that shows the minion stats, upgrade info, its inventory, and the minion item slots. If we pay attention to the minion items on the left hand side, the first one is simply a cosmetic slot and doesn't actually affect the minion performance. The fuel slot, shipping slot, and minion upgrade slots however, can drastically affect the performance of any minion that you use. The fuel you use will determine either how quickly a minion operates or how much of a specific resource it produces, and some fuels will even make the minion produce entirely different items altogether. The shipping slot allows you to either place a budget hopper or enchanted hopper in the minion, which will automatically sell the items that the minion produces at a percentage of the NPC price. Generally speaking, you want to avoid using this slot, as it's always better to just manually collect your minions and then sell the items yourself, but there are very few setups that will benefit from this slot, which I will cover later on in this video. The last two slots are just all-purpose minion upgrade slots, and you'll want to fill these in every minion setup you ever use, because they will heavily impact how much value you get from your minions. 
I won't touch on them too much right now, but generally speaking, you will want to use super compactor 3000s, diamond spreadings, or minion expanders in these slots, because these will prevent your minions from filling up extremely quickly, and they also boost your income, collections, and XP gain overall. However, now that I've covered the basics and the importance of minions in Hypixel Skyblock, I'm going to move on to actually setting up your first minion setup to get you started with your Skyblock profile. To start your minion setup at the beginning of the game, the biggest thing that you want to prioritize is minion slots. Getting your minion slot number up as high as possible is especially important early on, since the base 5 slots that you start with really aren't going to be much of a help. As a result, you should always prioritize unlocking as many easy minion collections as you can, crafting up as many unique minions as possible, and then storing these minions somewhere on your profile so you can use them at a later date. Do not craft heaps of the same minion, however, because this will not unlock you any more minion slots and will just waste your materials. In order to actually unlock minion slots, you need to make sure you craft brand new, unique minions that you've never made before, whether they're just increased tiers of a previous minion or a completely new minion altogether. You're going to want to repeat these minion crafting steps until you've unlocked around 10 minion slots because this should be a good stopping point before crafting minions gets a bit expensive for the time being. While you're working on the collections and the materials to get these minions, you can also head on over to the community shop and make sure that you upgrade your minion slot profile upgrade, as this will basically grant you a free 5 minion slots as long as you choose to max it out. The only thing holding you back here is time, so just wait for the upgrades to finish and make sure you refresh it once it's done. Assuming you've now got yourself 10 minion slots and you're ready to create your setup, the very first minion that I always recommend beginners to get started with is redstone minions. Redstone minions are very important because they will passively level up your redstone collection without you having to do anything. And this is extremely important because redstone collection contains accessory bag upgrades. I have a whole separate video that explains the importance of accessories in the description of this video, so you can check that out after you've finished with this one. For the time being though, all you need to know is that the more accessory slots you have, the more accessories you can fit in your accessory bag, and the more accessories you have in your bag, the stronger your profile is going to be. Since accessory slots are unlocked through the redstone collection, leveling up using your minions is definitely the best thing that you can do at the very start of the game. When setting up your redstone minions, I highly suggest upgrading them using regular compactors at the very minimum. However, if you invest in some simple minion storages or even diamond spreadings, this is going to help you out even more. Diamond spreadings will make the redstone minions create both diamonds and redstone, so you can level up two different collections at once. The minion storage will help your redstone minions store more resources, and I recommend stopping at a medium storage since anything higher is just going to be too expensive for now. As for the tier of redstone minion you should be using, tier 5s will work fine for the time being, but you can go as far as tier 7 or tier 9 depending on how fast you want to unlock your collections and how much money you want to put into them. And with that being said, that is quite literally your very first super basic Hypixel Skyblock minion setup. While you let these things run in their own time, you can go ahead and level your skills, earn some coins, and figure out other aspects of the game, all the while your redstone minions are hard at work and leveling your collections. However, once you max out the collection and it's time for an upgrade, there's a few important minions I'd recommend upgrading into. The next upgrade to redstone minions is actually a bit of an interesting one, and that is to use general collection minions. Now, you might be thinking, what are collection minions? I've never heard of that term before. Collection minions is just a term that's used to describe any minion no matter what resource it produces, but specifically when its main purpose is to level a collection. For example, if your bone collection is low and you want to max it out, you could use a skeleton minion to slowly level it up passively, and this minion would also count as a collection minion. Now, if you haven't already realized, the vast majority of the minions that you craft to level up your minion slots are also collection minions. So if you followed this guide closely, you should have a handful of collection minions just lying around in a chest somewhere because you had to upgrade those to actually get your minion slots. As a result, my upgrade recommendation from redstone minions is to use all of these collection minions that you already have lying around and then place them down to level up every single collection that you have until you can max them out. The specifics of which collections you choose to level don't really matter, it's more so just being able to unlock as many recipes as possible so you can make your life much easier. If you've managed to level your endstone collection by hand because you've done a lot of node mining in the end, then great, you won't need to place down your endstone minion because you've already maxed that one. 
But if you haven't even started leveling your gunpowder collection because killing the creepers in the deep cavern sucks, then placing down your creeper minion will be a huge help in maxing out this collection. If you haven't noticed already, the early stages of minion setups should be focused on preparing yourself for the mid and late game stages, rather than trying to rush making tons of coins or leveling up your skills. As for minion upgrades that you should be using for this new setup, the money that your redstone minions made should have been able to cover for a few super compactors at least, which are just the upgraded variant of the regular compactor you've already got. If you aren't able to afford super compactors for all of your minions just yet, try to get as many as you can for the time being and actively work towards doing so until every single minion has one. This is by far the most useful minion item in the entire game, and it's going to last you even when you're using a multi-billion coin minion setup. On the other hand, you should be using either a diamond spreading or a minion expander in the second upgrade slot, and this will vary depending on the interaction speed and the type of minion you're using. To quickly summarize when you should use a diamond spreading versus a minion expander, the general rule of thumb is as follows. If you want to maximize your income, then use a diamond spreading if the minion's interaction speed is 15 seconds or faster. If the interaction speed is slower than 15 seconds though, use a minion expander instead because this will typically earn you slightly more money. This isn't always the case, so just be sure to double check which ones provide more money specific to the minions that you are using. If you want to maximize the collection game of a minion though, then use minion expanders. These will very slightly buff the interaction speed of the minion, which will cause them to generate more resources and thus level the collection faster. That being said, using a diamond spreading can also be used to level a collection, except it's only going to level your diamond collection, so it's not exactly the same thing as the minion expander. Because of this, it's likely that you're going to be using all minion expanders and super compactors in your new collection minion setup, since this will max out the collections at the fastest speed and allow you to upgrade out of it as soon as possible. At this stage of the game, you can also start considering cheap fuels, and I'd recommend trying to push for enchanted lava buckets if you can, since they're cheap and they last indefinitely, so you're not going to have to replace them at all. Nonetheless, this concludes the early game section of today's video. So now that you've maxed out a large portion of your collections, you've got around 15 to 20 minion slots, and you know how to work with minions effectively, now we can start talking about the more profitable minion setups or the best ones to level your skills with. Depending on your budget, your needs, and what stage of the game you're at, the minions that you want to use will vary drastically. To start things off, I'm going to split these minion setups into three categories. You've got money-making minions, skill-leveling minions, and all-round minions. As the names imply, money making minions are designed to make a lot of money, but they won't be focusing on leveling skills or your collections. Skill leveling minions on the other hand are designed to level your skills very effectively, but they may not be very good for earning money. And all round minions, those are just minions that can level skills and earn you decent coins on the side, but they don't really fit into either category that well. The most common setup that people upgrade to coming into the mid game is either clay or snow minions. Now, technically speaking, clay and snow minions can also be considered early game, but because I like to think that early game should be designed on setting up the minion foundations and not so much full-blown minion setups, I'm going to leave these in the mid-game section of this video. Clay and snow minions are considered a very good starting minion setup because these minions are really cheap to max out and they also generate great income for their price. Better yet, both minions can also help you level your fishing and mining skill respectively, which can be super useful early on if you want to get a head start on these skills before you start to manually grind them. Particularly with the fishing skill, it is very nice to have a head start in the fishing levels because that way you can actually use certain fishing rods to manually grind the skill, rather than having to start all the way from scratch using some really garbage fishing rods. Clay and snow minions are classed as all round minions because they make pretty solid money, especially at their price points, but they also level their respective skills quite efficiently, especially the snow minion. The snow minion is actually so good that it can arguably fit into the skill leveling minion category as well, because it actually levels your mining skill really quickly and happens to be one of the better minions in the game to do so. From my experience, it took me about 6 months to reach mining 50 using a really budget snow minion setup that had no buffs and nothing special about it, and this is really good considering that you can get these levels by doing next to no work at all at a very, very cheap price. However, if you were looking for something that's a little bit more costly but will make you better money, then I'd suggest looking into slime minions. Slime minions can easily generate 5 million coins per day using a very subpar setup, 
but the one downside to this is the initial setup cost being much higher than something like your clay or snow minions. On top of this, slime minions generate no skill XP whatsoever, and they do not level any collections either. So you are quite literally sacrificing everything just to make as much money as possible. That being said, if you're happy to manual level all your skills and you're comfortable with where your collections are at, then I'll leave a link in the description to my slime minion setup guide so you can follow that and make as much money as possible. If you're not super fixated on making tons of coins though, then you might want to look into melon minions or fishing minions. Melon minions are by far the best minion to use if you want to passively level your farming, and surprisingly, you can actually make really solid money with them even if you don't choose to max out your setup too much. Melon minions thrive with consistent AFK for a variety of different reasons, so once again, I will leave a separate video in the description that covers melon minions in much more detail if this does sound like the option for you. Fishing minions are similar to melon minions in this regard, but instead of farming XP, they grant fishing XP. The only difficult thing about fishing minions is the fact that they generate a lot of unique resources and fill up super quickly. So if you do plan on using these minions, be sure that you can afford the extra extra large minion storages to go with it. That being said, fishing minions sadly don't make any good money at all, so you should only be using them if you want to avoid manual fishing altogether. The setup for these is much simpler than other minions on this list though, just use whatever fuel you can afford, whether it's an enchanted lava bucket, magma bucket, plasma bucket, or even catalysts, and then pair this with the usual super compactors and minion expanders. Since you're likely using these to level your fishing XP rather than earn coins, minion expanders are going to be more valuable than diamond spreadings here. Now the last minion setup that I'm going to cover in this video isn't really a dedicated setup like the rest of these, but it's more so just some tips to keep in mind for the mid game. The beauty about clay, snow, slime, melon, and fishing minions is that these minions are almost guaranteed to never become outdated, no matter how many updates Skyblock goes through. This is because clay, snow, and slime minions all make their money by selling the materials to the NPC, meaning that unless Hypixel makes some drastic changes to the NPC prices, they're still going to make great money. Snow, melon, and fishing minions are also recommended more for leveling skills rather than generating income, and unless Hypixel releases minions that do these jobs better, or they nerf these minions for some weird reason, these will forever stay at the top as your best options for these skills. That being said, if you are a little bit more ballsy and you're able to play on shifts in the market very efficiently, you can actually make substantially more money using off-meta minion choices, but this is generally far riskier and I wouldn't recommend it if you want a more hands-off and passive approach to your minion setup. For example, when the Rift update came out, the price of gas tiers skyrocketed because they were in extremely high demand for specific crafts. Gas minions ended up being the best money-making minion in the game by almost three times as much as second place, and this lasted for about two weeks before they went back to normal again. Technically speaking, you could have made outrageous profit amounts if you played the alpha, noticed that the gas tiers would become valuable, and then used those minions during that period, but this is quite a lot of work for a short boost of money, and it's not really something that I'd recommend. Not to mention, if you do pick up on these market changes early, you're probably better off just investing in the material, so buying tons of gas tiers and then selling them later, not really switching out the minions to do so. That being said, there are also a handful of other solid minion choices out there, such as sheep, gravel, chicken, glowstone, pig, and even lapis minions, but I wouldn't recommend using any of these either because you'll likely need to AFK them more often, they might have some intricate setups to maximize profits, and they'll just be a lot more work to make super profitable compared to something like slime minions. Slime minions are the staple of the mid-game money-making minions because of how easy and reliable they are to use, while other possible options tend to not be as reliable, even if they can be slightly better. Either way, this covers all of the necessary information regarding the best mid-game minion setups, and once you feel like you've had enough here and you want to upgrade into something even better, then the last section of this video is perfect for you. Late game minion options are an interesting one, because some of them are wildly expensive and require some of the craziest setups to make super efficient, while others are typically just more advanced and intricate versions of setups that you've likely already seen. 
For starters, I want to address the last and also the most expensive minion in the game, the Inferno minion. I won't get into too many details in this video about how they work, but what I will say is that these minions are the only way that you can unlock the Chili Pepper collection. The reason these minions are considered late game is because of their crazy crafting and maintenance costs. The tier 3 minion alone costs around 4 million coins on average, while upgrading to a tier 5 is 17 million coins. On top of this, Inferno minions are pretty useless without using Hypergolic Grade Fuel, which if you aren't aware already, one Hypergolic Fuel will fuel an Inferno minion for 24 hours, and the cheapest one costs a little over 4.5 million coins to craft. Long story short, these minions are very expensive to get started, but have some very rewarding payouts if you can stick to them for long enough. Similar to the other complicated minion setups in this video, I will leave a link in the description below that explains Inferno minions in much more depth, so if that's something that does interest you, you can always check that video out after this one. Unlike the Inferno minion though, the next late game minions I'm going to talk about aren't considered late game because they're outrageously expensive, but more because their requirements are very high. The minions I'm talking about are the Red Sand and Mycelium minions, also known as the Nether minions. Both of these are very tricky to level up to max because you need 12,000 reputation in either faction to get them to tier 12, but they're also quite expensive to level up to tier 12 too. However, if you are willing to work towards achieving this, they will most definitely outperform your standard mid-game slime setup, but they need a lot more attention in the process. For example, red sand minions can be buffed using a snail pet and a mining crystal, so if you AFK on your island with a fully maxed setup using a level 100 snail pet and the mining crystal is placed, you'll see an even bigger increase in your profits than you would have seen with slime minions. Slime minions can also be buffed using a magma cube pet, but this isn't enough to compete with red sands. Mycelium minions are pretty much the same as Red Sands, but the Mushroom Cow pet buffs them instead, and the prices of both Red Sand and Mycelium tend to fluctuate around each other very often. If you choose to use either of the Nether minions, it doesn't really matter which one you go with, just choose the one that matches the faction that you've picked, and it will serve its purpose just fine. If you are like me and you've got 12,000 reputation in both factions though, then I believe Mycelium tends to be a little bit more consistent because it is used in more crafts than the Red Sand minions, so you can go for that if you really want to, but generally speaking, they are the same thing. On a completely different note though, these aren't even the best money-making minions in the game. If you have the coins to afford a fully maxed out tier 11 tarantula minion setup, then this completely blows the profits of the nether minions out of the water. Tarantula minions are almost always in the top 3 highest earning minions at base values with no fancy buffs or setups, but they can also be buffed using a spider pet and of course you can use really good minion upgrades to increase their efficiency too. As a result, these are even better for earning coins passively, but their setup cost is over 3 billion coins, and at that rate, you're probably going to want to use the even more expensive setups on this list, which I'm just about to cover. Because if you thought that was bad, spending 3 billion coins on the Tarantula minion setup, then wait until you hear about the current ultimate minion setup that is by far the strongest and makes the best money in the game. So the current best minion setup that consistently earns the most amount of coins in this game is a fully maxed out tier 12 revenant minion setup. Now, the reason it's so good isn't because it makes a lot of money from the resources that the Revenant minions generate, but it's actually from the combat XP that you gain from collecting the minions. The idea behind a fully maxed out tier 12 Revenant minion setup is that you can use it to level up Golden Dragon pets, and once they're level 200, you can sell them for a massive profit. To very, very quickly summarize how this setup works, if you're on a co-op of 8 people with 31 tier 12 revenant minions, you use hyper catalysts in every single minion, super compactors, and fly catchers to level 2 golden dragons at the same time, one with a combat XP boost, one with an XP share, and you pass this around to all of your co-op members every single day for a huge boost in XP, then you can profit around 150 million coins per day. Now you're probably sat here super confused wondering what sort of black magic is able to manifest 150 million coins every single day, and I know what I just said probably sounds like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, so once again, I'm going to leave a detailed guide in the description below which will explain revenant minions in significantly more depth. 
The key takeaway from this example, however, is the fact that leveling golden dragons is what's used to profit here, not so much that the resources that the revenant minions generate actually earns you those coins. Late game minion setups are typically just how creative and how far you're willing to go to squeeze out every single coin you possibly can from the minions you use, and as a result, this is likely a stage of the game that you'll probably never even reach, whether it's because you simply don't have the funds to do so, or because you can't be bothered to micromanage your minions so much. To bring my own experience into this, I personally just use tier 9 red sand minions with plasma buckets, super compactors, and minion expanders because they're relatively low effort and they're slightly better than slime minions, but for most people, even just the simple slime minion setup is still the best option. Nonetheless, hopefully this segment on late game minion setups has opened your eyes to the seemingly endless possibilities that you have with minion setups. Typically, this stuff is too complicated for the average player, and unless you're really keen on hyper-specific min-maxing, I wouldn't stress too much about trying to achieve this. The final segment of this video is just a quick collection of extra useful information that doesn't really fit into a specific early, mid, or late game category. These are just valuable tips I've got that will help you progress using your minions, so be sure to use these where applicable. If you are using a full skill leveling minion setup, try your absolute best to not claim them unless the Derpy Mayor is active. Derpy boosts all skill XP gain by 50%, and he also doubles minion output, so by letting your minions generate items leading all the way up to Derpy's election, this will maximize the amount of skill XP you gain in the process. If your minions do start to fill up before Derpy is active and you don't want to claim the entire thing, you can always claim out random bits of items inside of their storages, and if you are using minions that have diamond spreadings, you can always just claim the diamonds in the storages and this will help free up some space for extra resources. When Derpy does get elected, be sure to wait as long as possible as well, because the double output that you do get from his perks will be active for the duration of his election, and this combined with the skill XP boost is huge if you're using skill leveling minions. When looking for viable off-meta minions, there are tons of useful tools out there that will provide you with valuable data. I've personally had a lot of success with a website called High Minions, and once again, I will leave a link to this in the description below if you want to use it yourself. This website just shows you simple metrics, such as the most profitable minions based on bizarre prices at the time, how much money your minions will make depending on what upgrades you put in them, and it even has a recommended minion upgrading tool to help you unlock minion slots. I'd highly recommend checking this out if you're trying to make the most out of your minions because there are some pretty useful features this website has to offer. That being said, High Minions isn't the only tool out there and I'm sure there are probably more refined or better profit calculators that do exist, so if you do a little bit of searching around, I'm sure you'll be able to find something. And then for my final tip of this video, if you're trying to buy minions that are typically high in demand, such as slime, snow, or clay minions, consider buying them secondhand from other players before crafting them up yourself. Oftentimes, people in public lobbies or Discord servers will undersell their minions at a nice discount, so they can receive some return on their initial investment. This is perfect for the buyers too, as they will save money and time crafting them themselves, so if you have the patience for it, I highly suggest trying this out. My go-to recommendations are the Skyblock Simplified or Skyblock Z Discord servers, which I once again will leave a link in the description below to both of these Discord servers so you can try them out yourself. And with all of that being said, that concludes everything I had for this complete minion progression guide. Hopefully you found this video useful, enjoyable, or informative in some way, and if you did, consider leaving a like or subscribing to this channel, as this is the sort of content that I post around here. Hopefully I've equipped you with all of the knowledge you'll need to get the most out of your minion setups, and I wish you the best of luck progressing in Hypixel Skyblock.